All right, everybody. This is Microcosmologist back with another layout overview video, and this is the big one, the Milwaukee Road Beer Line. So this was a massive undertaking, as you can see, and this was a club layout that began in around June of 2020 and has published the first version of the layout here in mid-November of 2020 and we have had about 25 people on the team working on various aspects of this layout and in this video I'm just gonna show overall views of the entire layout like you're seeing right now at the very beginning so you can get a sense of what's here and how large it is and then I'm gonna go and sweep through the entire thing and talk about it at length so if you're interested in the history and the detail this is a one-to-one -one scale uh, modeling of the city of Milwaukee all the way from at the northeasternmost end, Humboldt Yard, up to the Lincoln Street Warehouse where we began this video at the southwestern end. And um, in order to build this track work, I found some track blueprints online uh, of Milwaukee Road origin. So we imported these track blueprints as quick terrain and then built the rails right on top of it uh, which is excellent uh, meaning everything is pretty much perfect true to life in terms of the layout of the track and uh, we've done a whole bunch of stuff like replicating local industries like you see uh, Weisel's Sausage here uh, there's Mommy Washed Coal and Milwaukee Western Fuel Company here and um, yeah, let's just dig into this. There's a whole lot of details here and uh, a lot of stuff that uh, I'd like to talk about and honestly probably way too much to even really be able to get through. I'm sure there's going to be lots of things I forget to discuss in this video. Uh, if you're one of the team members watching this and I forget to discuss your awesome contribution, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, there are so many aspects and parts to this. Uh, it's kind of huge, as you can see. So let's discuss the Milwaukee Road Beer Line. It served three breweries, Blatt's, Pabst, and Schlitz. Down at the southern end of the layout we have the Lincoln Street Warehouse, which is a distributor of Blatt's beer, as you may have already guessed, from the huge sign and the refrigerator cars out front. These are models by Long and liveries by Burnt Toast. And um, I'm probably just going to give up on trying to name who did what immediately because there's so much that people have contributed. And uh, there is a credits plaque on the back side here, which uh, you'll see. So let's just put this on screen briefly. Thank you to everybody on this list for all the things that you did to make this layout what it is. Couldn't have done it without you. Really couldn't have. Uh, so as you can see, we've got a staging area pretty generous. Uh, I've put in some example consists with motive power and rail cars behind it based on what year and what type of train this is. So for example in the 1950s we've got inbound empties. You can spot the empty refrigerator car by these open hatches. This is your spotting feature for open uh, for empty versus versus full. Uh, and then we've also got a 1960s and a 1970s and uh, the very last thing that got put in this layout was this beautiful Erie built model uh, by Kevin. But I'm digressing. Let's get back on topic. Blatt's Warehouse. This is the distribution point for Blatt's beer. Uh, Lincoln Street Fireproof Warehouse was home to a number of industries and honestly I don't even know all of them. Oster's Furniture is a big one. We've got a couch and a sofa inside in the display room and uh, out front we have Milwaukee Journal Sentinel boxcars. These would be paper for the Milwaukee Journal paper. A couple of uh, cool ice refrigerator cars and a tugboat going down the river. This is the Milwaukee River and the Milwaukee River connects of course to Lake Michigan. I've got a map here which I'm not going to leave on screen for too long. If you play this layout you can really spend a long time studying this and see 
all the things that are present here. But we're just going to go right through and discuss all the different things. And as I'm going, I'm going to try to discuss what you might do if you are playing on this layout, if you want to operate it. So as you can see, we've got uh, a whole bunch of refrigerator cars here. They're loaded because the hatches are down. So if you wanted to, you could replace these with empties or um, let's come back to that thought. we got to go around the corner in order to ice these. Uh, so we have the ice refrigerator cars and then we have mechanical reef reefers as they were known. Refrigerator cars often referred to in the railroading world as reefers. I'm going to say that a lot throughout this video. Uh, so these are custom liveries that are period accurate. Um, this giant Milwaukee logo looks a little bit fake, but it's real. It was actually like that. I'd like to point out the awesome ground detailing done by uh, both Long and William on the team here throughout this map. Uh, really grateful for their contributions on the dirt, making it look uh, lived in and real as much as you can for a low poly uh, train game. And here comes an inbound train. You see we've got these awesome 1950s cars here. Some liveries for local industries, including the furniture company. It has its own boxcar going right there. This freight house is worth mention while we're here. This actually used to be a passenger depot way, way back in the day. And uh, it was converted to a freight house, so you can spot boxcars, uh, any kind of generic boxcars like these Milwaukee Road ones on the end can be spotted on these tracks right here. This is also a team track with this big loading platform. You could spot all kinds of things. We've got a couple furniture store boxcars chilling out. And if you had a train with extra boxcars, you can put them in there. You may notice trains disappear into this warehouse. Uh, this is my reversing loop to go back to staging and um, hot on its heels. We've got another refrigerator train filled with uh, beer cars, mostly Schlitz, and then a couple assorted Milwaukee Road. This big building here is a power plant. Uh, easy to identify landmark. And uh, the most easily identifiable uh, location on the layout, the Schlitz Brewery. So this is really the centerpiece Schlitz, at one point in history, was the largest producer of beer in the United States, and I think they were not far behind for the world. So this was really our gargantuan operation in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, back in the day. Uh, and we've recreated all the tracks going into it. I'm honestly not completely sure what all of this trackage does. Uh, if you're watching this video and you're an expert on history and you know about this brewery, I would love to hear from you uh, and get some information on exactly all the things that are happening in here. I've labeled the buildings as best I can. So we have bottling plant A, bottling plant B, we have a keg plant right next door, and we have an icing house for these ice reefer cars to get filled up with ice. And things that I'm interested in learning about are, you know, <laughs> what what is this really wild uh, track arrangement? We didn't make this up. This is straight off the railroad blueprints. Uh, so this is how it really was. And... Uh, here is the other end of where the trains come out from staging. I've kind of cheated. This is I'm proud to say this is the only piece of track on the layout that didn't actually exist. Uh, so just crossing that street right there, that's the only piece of fictional trackage. And then this giant building here is bottling plant C, which was the main Schlitz bottling plant. As you can see, it's quite large. And this was where the bulk of the beer came from. Also, right next door, we have a Pabst grain elevator, which can accept uh, inbound grain cars. As you see, uh, we've got a whole bunch sitting right here, ready to be unloaded. While I'm here, I'll point out this little black chute is actually the cullet chute. Cullet is the word for broken glass. So if you've got a brewery this size, this is your bottling plant, you're going to have a lot of broken glass. And once a week, it all got emptied out into something like uh, this gondola right here. You'd probably bring in a gondola, something like 
mm, I guess it would probably have a, a cover on it, wouldn't it? So maybe maybe a hopper like this is what you'd use to fill up with broken glass, and once a week that would go out. And we have a number of other buildings worth talking about. This is the main grain elevator. So grain shipments would come in. It also received tank cars full of, I don't know, chemicals, whatever you needed to do brewing. I, I'm admittedly not up on the ins and outs of how it all works. And then we have a spent grain elevator here, which I've labeled. And this is, you know, a really famous location. This big Schlitz sign is kind of iconic. And we've also recreated this little octagon-shaped Milwaukee Road uh, gatehouse right outside, which is a distinctive Milwaukee Road feature. And this yard is Cherry Street Yard. This is where Pabst beer was actually loaded. So right in front of the Schlitz Brewery, we have an army of these Pabst Blue Ribbon trucks, which are driving here from the Pabst Brewery, which is across the river and a mile or so away from the location of our layout, and loading them into all these ice reefer cars. And so if you want to operate this, you would bring in empties like you see here for Blatt's. And you need an icing platform. And so I took one liberty. Uh, again, if you're watching this video and you're up on your history and you know where they iced these, I would love to know. I added this little one car icing platform here. So if you want to, you can bring, if you want to operate this, you can bring in your unloaded ice reefers, ice them up at this one platform here. And then you'd probably need to switch them out. So you'd do something like pick this one up and pretend like it's getting fill, filled up with ice do that. They close the hatches. Now it's ready to receive the beer. You can bring your your iced refrigerator car over into the yard, put it next to one of these PBR dray vans, which is the word for these little little beer trucks, and fill it up with beer. And then it's ready to be sent on its way to the Humboldt yard, which we'll get to in a little while. You may have noticed all the trolleys going up and down the street. The Milwaukee Electric Rail Company, t uh ran a series of trolleys, uh, streetcars, through this area from early 1900s to the 1950s, and they went far and wide. Uh, this was actually an interurban service, so it went all the way down to Kenosha and uh, out to Sheboygan. Uh, it went very far. so. Pretty cool that this went right past uh, the name of this yard, which I actually failed to label, is the Chestnut Street Yard. You may notice I've got a lot of signs. This is Juno Street Bridge. Chestnut was renamed Juno Avenue. Uh, there's another mistake. It should be Juno Avenue. And uh, this line by the railroad crews was often referred to as the Chestnut Street Branch because of this being the terminus of the line. Uh, this is all a big branch line. One of the most celebrated and famous branch lines in history, the Milwaukee Road Beer Line. Uh, so we've got Pabst Shipping Center. This is also a scrap dealer. You can see all the junk that's kind of cluttered around the building. I don't know if it was really called Milwaukee Scrap Metal Inc., but I put that sign on there to clarify. That's also what's happening in this building. And we've got a bunch of drawbridges for all these uh, tugboats and barges to go through. Let's take a look at the other side of the Schlitz Brewery. Here we have some offices. And then this is a uh, custom bit architecture that uh, I made in Blender to suit this building because I, I really felt like this had to be in here. Uh, this brew house turret is a very distinctive feature and it's still there today. And I did take a few liberties as we get farther away from the trackage uh, it gets more and more fictional and uh, I just wanted to add a little bandstand uh, so I put in this bandstand here uh, which is kinda cool and a little park scene and we have uh, scenes that are inspired by real life but weren't actually exactly right here. So I've got a photograph of Milwaukee that shows uh, streetcars going into an underground section just like this and then at some point or another I saw a picture of a car barn uh, which looks very similar to this. Some buildings that are labeled here, the stock house, uh, the keg plant again, 
going back over this, the grain elevator, fermentation house is here. Uh, this is the malt house. You may be wondering what the heck these things are. These are kilns. Again, I, I am not totally up on the process of brewing and what these are for and how they work, but this is what it looked like based on photos we have uh, compiled a massive repository of Milwaukee Road historical photos. Um, spent a long time on the Milwaukee Public Library site finding things. And uh, continuing along the line here we have a little subway station uh, where the trolley line continues and then comes around this curb. This is also inspired by a photograph that I saw of the line I think as it heads toward Kenosha uh, through a below ground section like this and we have one area over here that's meant to uh, kind of mimic the inner urban uh, portion of the Milwaukee Electric Railway Company so this little scenic loop here and uh, there was a a book with a, a cover that inspired sort of this section and you can see one of our map builders took the liberty of putting a camera right here which I love uh, so that camera, if you sit right here and look, this is exactly the perspective from which the photo is taken uh, of one of these streetcars coming around the bend. And let's actually step inside this streetcar for just a second here. Uh, I love the detailing on these. This is made by Waldo, a.k.a. Trolleymeister, and uh, he put a whole bunch of vintage ads inside these, including our uh, Holy Trinity of Schlitz, Pabst, and Blatz. Uh, along with some other period uh, things that are appropriate too. So um, let's continue down the layout. We have a big residential stretch here. Before I go any farther, I should note this intersection. Uh, the main street that goes all the way up and down this layout, which I struggled to label because it never comes near the edge, is Commerce Street. So this is a critically important street that goes all the way down almost this entire layout uh, continues past here so this intersection Walnut Street uh, Palmer and Commerce is a really cool looking intersection and um, here we've got another Milwaukee uh, gatehouse right there I'm just gonna showcase this engine for a brief second while it's passing by this is the star of the beer line right here the Milwaukee uh, excuse me, the Fairbanks Morse H1044 and um, Dark Derby on the liveries, Frisco on the model, uh, microcosmologist here with some improvements on it and uh, I absolutely love this engine. It is awesome. Uh, the back with the overhang, really iconic look, inspired the Half-Life 2 Razor train and uh, just an awesome engine. I would not have even started this whole project honestly if I hadn't known he was working on it so uh, just the knowledge that he was making this kind of gave me the green light in my mind to go ahead and yeah we can we can do this we can make this. Um, so continuing on I'll touch on more of the models later we have bottling plant C. Uh, some people may be watching this and saying, what's going on here? There's supposed to be a huge shed covering this whole area. I've left this open just because it's easier to access if you want to actually run trains in and out of here. And there was a period in history uh, where it was exactly like this. I've seen photos uh, that show it loaded up with cars. Uh, presumably they have to be loading beer. Uh, and there's no roof here. So this existed like this for at least part of its history. And the ongoing theme with this layout is that we're really modeling things at the peak of their interestingness and not uh, with rigidity to one particular year. So there's a bunch of, um, let's just say, loose historical time frame things in this, such as this icing house. This would be later turned into something else when they stopped using these ice reefers like this and the whole railroads, uh, they all converted to mechanical reefers. Um, Beautiful set of liveries here by Terrain Meister. Uh, he made a boxcar pack. Long made these boxcars. Um, I love the variety that they add. Paint train on the caboose right there. Another Kevin is there. Uh, Kevin model uh, with the 50s semis here. Frisco did the trailer. Uh, what else do we got? 
this is a boot and shoe company and I didn't get too in-depth with this area right here as we start to get farther from the tracks I started to kind of pay less and less attention to what was what because this is already as you can tell our gargantuan research project uh, this yard right here is the Walnut Street yard where I'm wa over Walnut Street as you can see it's filled up with a whole bunch of empties so it, again if you're operating this you would take these empties uh, all, in, all of these are Schlitz you would take them over to the icing house here and fill them up with ice and then if they're the cream colored livery the way I'm operating it or suggesting to is take all the cream colored ones to bottling plant A and B as well as the keg plant and take all the yellow ones over to the big bottling plant C here and load them up with beer and send them on their way they would have operated this in real life with a yard tractor I don't have any pictures of that. I don't know what it looked like. There's a big empty lot here. These are actually empty beer vats. Kind of hard to convey that, but that's what those are if anyone's wondering. Uh, and we've got a semi uh, tearing through the parking lot here, kicking up some dust. I'll point out this model while we're here. I'm going to go into camera mode just to make things look nice. Uh, this is by... Uh, another team member, Space, Space Line Models, made this beautiful M EMD MP15AC, uh, which I really love. He crushed it, as usual, and uh, I made a livery for it that's got some walking road details. You can see inside the cab. Let's just go right in there and look around. Uh, this is awesome. This is just awesome. Uh, all this detail here. He went above and beyond. This is really cool stuff, and... Uh, I think if you make it nighttime, yeah, all this is glow in the dark too, which is real cool. And uh, while we have it nighttime, let's uh, let's take a quick look at some of the other details that are present at night. So this went in kind of at the eleventh hour, lighted up all the windows, and if you turn on bloom, it looks pretty cool. Turn up the bloom. So there you go, Schlitz Brewing at night, and uh, some of those semis have lighted headlights, which is pretty cool, and lighted tail lights, as you can see there. So some nighttime effects that kind of got thrown in at the last second, those are pretty neat. Let's go back to daytime, turn off the bloom. So exiting out of camera mode, let's continue on down the river. We got some tugboats, uh, I like this scene with uh, the smoke coming out. And uh, a major local industry, Albert Trostel and Sons Tanners. This is modeled in the late period where there's just one building, a seven-story building making leather, and all the other things that a tannery makes. I'm honestly not even sure. I whipped up these fictitious boxcars. This is their, lo their company logo, uh, which I meant to stick on the top of the building but never got around to, and then just invented that slogan, the leather of legends, kind of as a spoof because there's a book I found online about Trostel Tannery where uh, the name of the book was The Legend of Albert Trostel, and I was like, legend? Wow, this guy is not just another tanner. He's spoke of by legend. Uh, this lot where you see all this empty, uh, where all these semis are present, this would have all been Trostel Tannery back in its prime. So they had a huge complex of buildings here. Most of it got knocked down. So this is more appropriate for the 1970s, which is perfect. We've got our MP15 rolling through right now, along with the America's Resourceful Railroad Grain Hopper right behind them. And we have a team track. So I um, should probably put a sign for that too, but you could unload box cars, flat cars, all sorts of things. Anything that could go into a semi-trailer could get unloaded right here. You can deliver your Trostel Tannery box cars right there. Here's our Milwaukee Journal Sentinel box cars on their way to Chestnut Street. And Again, if anyone's uh, watching this who really knows about Milwaukee, I'm kind of hoping that I'll get contacted uh, after someone who knows a lot sees this video. I don't know what these buildings were. I would I would love some information on... Um, this is a really kind of funky-shaped building. It, it was a weird shape. 
Uh, I'd like to know more about what that is. And we have a whole bunch of residential area up here. And now we've arrived at a really cool piece of track called the racetrack and or the roller coaster. I've heard those terms used interchangeably. I don't know uh, what the correct term is, but I guess one would assume that the part that goes down is the racetrack and the part that goes back up is the roller coaster. But uh, again, this is all real. We didn't invent any of this. This is straight out of historical photos and track plans directly from the Milwaukee Road itself. They had this little staircase that went down so people could come down here and throw the switches as they were operating back and forth. It was probably really annoying for all the switch guys to <laughs> get the exercise and run up and down the stairs as they're doing this stuff. Uh, but this is how it really was, along with all this fencing and all these power lines. These power lines are props that I created. There's a whole ton of props in this map. Uh, there's a gigantic amount of props, liveries, and custom models all packed into this map. A huge amount of love and care and attention to detail went into this. While I'm here, I'll point out some of the shapes made things that are in this map. Dev gets a shout out right here with this uh, custom semi. He made this all out of shapes. This is uh, not a model made in Blender or anything like that. This is made in-game using cylinders, boxes, uh, rectangles, just shapes. Uh, as opposed to these by Coconut Pie, the, uh, these beautiful 1950s automobiles that you've been seeing all throughout this video already, populating the layout. These are wonderful. I can't get enough of them. And uh, there's another shapes truck out here. Uh, I think the other one's a Peterbilt. This one is uh, Kenworth and is labeled Kenneth as a nod to Rust Belt World, which is Dev's main project. Check it out if you haven't seen it already. And there's a Volvo here as well, added by Okami. And I think this is a reference to um, a racing game, The Art of Rally, I want to say. And it looks like we left something floating in the air there. There's uh, one blatant an an anachronism, historical inaccuracy in this layout, and that's the presence of the Lakefront Brewery. So this is there today in Milwaukee, and I just thought that it was really cool and should be included because this is kind of the, the link between the past and the present. Lakefront Brewery is one of the, I think, the only, um, you know, significant uh, mid mid-sized brewery actually on the beer line today so I felt that it belonged and I also didn't know exactly what this building was way back in the day at one point in time it was a power plant there was huge chimneys coming out of here I've referenced pictures of that and this big bridge the Holton Street viaduct uh, is also a drawbridge too and I've got pictures of it open which is pretty neat so as you can see I switched the switches so that the trains actually come down the roller coaster and off the bottom of the racetrack. It just looks awesome watching these trains go through. Uh, it's really fun to just kind of hang out and rail fan on this layout because there's just so many neat things to see and the track is really interesting and uh, true to life. Yeah, this is how, how it all really was. And up on this track in the back, I noticed in photos they the railroad would tend to store uh, empty refrigerator cars there, so that's kind of prototypical how they're all kind of stashed back there. Here comes a big cut of empties right now coming down the roller coaster. Just an awesome bridge. When it was built, this bridge was uh, declared at its christening the best bridge in Milwaukee. It might still be. Uh, in current times, there's actually a second lower level you can cross on your bike or as a pedestrian and it's pretty popular. It's got five stars on Google Maps with like thousands of reviews. Go check it out. Here's another uh, semi-lot that is uh, just kind of beat up and filled with debris. And uh, some of you may be giggling at things you see on the ground right now, which I'm going to get to in a second. Uh, this goes into this massive coal yard. So this scene right here is you know, perhaps our, our longest scene in terms of one industry just going down this big stretch here. Uh, none of this is compressed or truncated at all. This is all full size. This is still Commerce Street. It transitions into, I don't know, dirt, kind of beat up pavement here. 
We've got some bulldozers. They're loading coal. So these barges came in from Lake Michigan filled with coal, uh, shepherded by these tugboats, and then they would use steam cranes and steam shovels like you see here. This is a custom shapes made uh, um, job by Burnt Toast, who just crushed it on this uh, shovel. Did not know he had it in him. Oh, yeah. Uh, as well as all the detailing on the ground to make this coal look nice. And so we've got heaps of this. It's loaded from the barges onto the shoreline and then put into these hoppers and then transferred to rail cars or trucks and then off to the city of Milwaukee. So in the early 1900s, coal was really how everything was fueled. And these boats would come up the river and supply this massive amount of coal that you see here, which got shipped all over the city to all sorts of stuff where they would burn it for fuel and heat. And early on, there was a set of, there was a set of tracks that came down here from Humboldt Yard, which we've almost arrived at, and they took it out in the 1960s. So we've modeled it as abandoned because everybody loves abandoned track. Duh, of course, abandoned track is cool. And um, just thought it'd be neat to have a stretch of that, so we've got one. And then also this track, man, I poured over reference pictures trying to determine if there even was track here for forever, and I finally found some pictures from the Milwaukee Public Library that clarified, yes, there is track here. And um, let's take a break right now. You may have noticed there's this big shadow on the ground of what looks like a gargantuan airplane, and that's exactly what it is. <laughs> okay, had a problem with the video there, so I restarted the recording. I'm going to pick up where I left off. Up here in the sky, we have a B-36 Peacemaker. This is a Shapes Made Plane by Okami. Who absolutely crushed it here? Uh, if you've ever made anything with shapes and rolling line, you know that it's it's difficult. And um, yeah, this has really taken it to just another level. The B36 here, six propellers, four jet engines, uh, six turning and four burning is what they said. The first bomber capable of. Um, nuclear arms and could fly 10,000 miles without refueling. That's uh, quite an aircraft and uh, was replaced by the, I want to say, uh, what was it? Um, anyway, amazing airplane. Really fantastic work by Okami on the shapes here. Next level stuff. Um, coming back down to earth here before we move on just a couple extra things um, about the coal industry here Milwaukee Western Fuel Company is the name of the company that controls all this uh, lakefront coal barge offloading operations and we have a little terminal here for them in the future I'd like to replace these default game models with something more customized to Milwaukee Road coal service um, that's just one thing we kind of didn't get to before release here. We also have a team track. This is the Commerce Street team track, and this platform served a series of tanneries that are across the river. So we haven't modeled the opposite side of the river, but if we had, there would be three or four really large buildings right about here, which are tanneries that would you know, bring their trucks across these uh, bridges over Humboldt Avenue. And... Uh, come down here and uh, this goofy little ramp to the team track where they would offload leather and supplies that they've made and, and pick up the things that they need to make more so there'd be tank cars box cars and probably flat cars at a team track doing a whole bunch of stuff here serving a variety of industries and if anyone watching this video uh, knows about the history of these buildings, I'd be pretty interested to know what these were. This triangular building was kind of annoying to build with shapes, but we got there. And there's a couple warehouses here. I'd like to know what these are because there are some sidings right here, so it'd be pretty plausible to have some boxcars set out serving these industries right off these sidings, but I don't know what these are. And uh, we have a bunch of residential streets in the background. This is the Hillside Bar. I need to do some more detailing um, on these buildings here. Oh, this is pretty cool. We've got the two different liveries here of the H1044. H1044, really the iconic engine of the beer line. If you look at historic photos 
of this layout, you will see this engine more often than not. Uh, there were others, definitely the uh, EMD switcher series, so like uh, we also have the uh, SW1 on this layout, which you see right here, thanks to Long, as, as well as four different versions of the detailing on it, which is awesome. And we have roaming around, like you saw earlier, the EMD uh, MP15 AC, which would be for 1975 and onward. So here we are. This is Humboldt Yard, the nexus of the beer line. This large area that you see right here, this would be where outbound traffic, we've got some inbounds here. These are empty ice reefers. They're going to go get filled up with ice and loaded with beer. And once they are, they'll come back here. And this is a staging point before things are sent out to the larger Milwaukee system. So all the trains would get made up in this area here and set into sections and so forth and, and f ready to be shipped out to the larger system. And we've got a whole bunch of boxcars all hanging out ready for uh, delivery in to all of the various team tracks and industries. And a couple other things in this area. This uh, sausage factory, Weisel's uh, Sausage, I'm pretty happy with how this turned out. Thank you to Dark Derby for help on all these graphics and signage. Uh, this is some pretty neat stuff. This, I've got a photo that is pretty much exactly just right what you see here in real life. You could put it side by side with Rolling Line and it came out pretty nice. They've also got a loading dock down here on the bottom. This is, uh, I don't know if they had these semi docks, but it seems like something that would fit right in, so I added that. The yard office is here, and again, the beer line was considered a, uh, a great assignment to have as a railroader because you're away from, <coughs> uh, excuse me, the hustle and bustle of the main lines. You're on a branch line, so they had some autonomy away from the bosses of the large, huge Milwaukee yards and kind of did things their own way down here. And um, we have a few extra buildings here. Again, I don't know what these are. I'd like to know more. If anyone watching this, this video knows um, about all these extra little industries, it'd be cool to fill them out with signage and appropriate cars and, and service them correctly. We do have a scrap yard here in the corner. It's kind of come some ways. The color that you see on the screen, I tested this video capture. For some reason, the colors don't look like what I see on my screen, so hopefully it's not too garish. Um, we have semi-traffic that would come through this area here. You may be looking at this off-ramp North Avenue and thinking, how in the world? Uh, but this is really how it was. It looked just like this, and um, semi-drivers would somehow navigate this. Maybe not with these long, maybe I should have this shorter style semi going around this, but this is this is what it was. <laughs> they did it. Milwaukee only hired the best semi-drivers. Semi -drivers. North Avenue Viaduct here, what, uh, I made some prop mods to represent this, did a little bit of uh, 3D modeling in Blender. Did a lot of 3D modeling in Blender for the various aspects of this layout. Shout out to Camo for the layout um, water tutorial with these colors here. He had a great Steam tutorial on how to do that, and I followed it. I think this was a swimming school at one point, uh, which is kind of funny because it's a dam right here. Uh, you better be a good swimmer swimming right there. <laughs> um, a few other things in this area. Mommy washed coal. This is a pretty big coal industry. You'd fill up these cars here, and um, they're washing the coal because that increases the value of it. Currently, as you can see, the trains just sort of disappear into the scenery right there. I'd like to expand this uh, literally where this big bunch of trees is. In real life, there's a cement plant right there, uh, as well as a whole bunch of warehouses, and the line continues up this way. I would like to expand this, but uh, as you may know by watching the uh, frames per second counter on the upper right there, I mean, we're pushing the limit of, uh, of the game here. We've got a lot of custom content in here, mods, all this is packaged into the workshop save. So you don't have to download any of it. It's all inclusive. If you download this layout, you don't have to get any of these mods. They're all baked in. Here's our EMD SW1, number 861, cruising through. And um, this is kind of a cool little detail. There's a, a, a boxcar hut right here. This is the 
well, for now, the start of our trackage. We've got a speeder house right there and uh, an old boxcar that's been turned into a shed. I built this in rolling line by actually sinking it beneath the ground with a piece of track right there if you want to try that on your own layout. Excellent weathering here by Long. Uh, shout out for the coal industry. It looks great. And uh, we've got some bulldozers by Kevin. A bunch of logs and pipes all sitting around. This is all just based off of historic photos. We've got a slew of historic photos that we used to to reference and build all this. And, and while we're here, actually, let's just back up and look at the whole thing. It's pretty neat to sort of just step back and, and see it from the big point of view. It's a pretty low-flying airplane right there. And we've got this map scattered around. If you're looking at it for reference, I put a star for you are here on all the different map placements just around the corner there's another one and so we'll keep going back down the other side of the layout here and touch upon a bunch of other things before we finish off reservoir avenue this is um paralleling commerce street there it would be pretty neat if we do continue this layout to uh actually build the reservoir there's right where you see this curve in the road just on the other side of that there's a big man-made lake right here in real life uh it'd be neat to model that When it was dedicated, Holton Street Bridge was designated as the best bridge in Milwaukee. So I put that on the sign right there. I just love um, watching trains go through here. Something about this stretch of track is just a lot of fun. The racetrack. So we'll do a little, just a little bit of rail fanning, why not? And these power lines are uh, a, a set of prop mods that I made. You can download them off the Steam Workshop. They're snapping and multi-paintable. So you see the ones on the upper right there are actually kind of a light, light brown. And uh, the insulators are blue. You can paint them however you like. And um, let's see what else we want to talk about. Let's get out of camera mode here. <coughs> talked about the scenic loop all this residential area this is also kind of a cool scene too again this is fictitious because we're out of view of the main trackage so it's kind of neat when you're riding the trolley and you come out and go through this underpass here and uh, this building I'm, I'm, I'd like to know more about this uh, sort of strange shaped <laughs> I don't know what the word for that geometric shape is even but uh, what was that anybody know Chime in in the comments. Message me. Somebody let me know your knowledge. I want it. Uh, so this car barn here, we've got a couple of box cars. Shout out to Detroit. He made these liveries uh, on Long's 40-foot box car. Uh, you can see all the members of the team illustrated here. Uh, these are great. I love these. I was thinking about putting these by the credits, but um, I thought they just look kind of cool sitting here on the edge by the T Merc car barn right there. And yeah, this is another 3D model I made of the the turret. I think I already touched on that earlier. Um, since I had to restart this video rendering uh, or this video recording, I, I'm not quite sure what I talked about and what I didn't. Um, these are kilns, just to go over it. Again, I don't know if I already talked about it or not, but uh, if you're wondering what these are, they're part of the brewery. And yeah, I would uh, love to continue this project, but uh, I, I feel like we've kind of really pushed the game uh, to the max. I'm not sure what the interest level would be for continuing the beer line beyond uh, the current the current length and and going even farther. Uh, so if that's something you'd like to see, message, let me know. But I'm really happy with how this turned out. This was a huge undertaking, and I had a ton of help from lots of people, especially all the trains and the liveries you see. There was uh, you know, a ton of contributors here. Uh, I'm sure I'm forgetting something that when I stop recording this, I'll be like, oh, why didn't I talk about that? But uh, a lot of work went into this, a lot of historical research as well, just finding photos, uh, reference pictures. One of the pictures that inspired me to really take this on was 
a similar view to what you see right about now. Uh, just the scene in this yard here with uh, all these tracks going everywhere, tracks going across the street, got sidings in the middle of the street, uh, just kind of railroad calamity and um, a really neat scene. Uh, this was kind of one of the first views I saw of the beer line trackage itself that made me say, wow, just look at look at the trackage. It's awesome. And also, if you're wondering about this uh, double rail right here, this is actually a scale. So they would take cars here and weigh them. I believe it was for the beer uh, to weigh, weigh the shipment as it was being sent out. Um, again, if you have lots of historical info and you want to chime in, uh, by all means, I'd love to learn more. I've consumed pretty much anything I can find online. There are some great YouTube videos out there, including uh, a public television special as well as a um, historical society presentation on it that came up this year, both of which were excellent and I watched multiple times. But my thirst for knowledge continues. So um, I'm kind of hoping that someone in the community of Milwaukee Road historians and real fans will see this video and take an interest in it and uh, maybe message me about some things that we've left out or done wrong or could do better definitely looking for feedback and you know just to learn about the history and maybe improve the layout along the way but it's been really fun to create this gigantic uh rolling line layout uh in rolling line is a game meant for model trains something of this scale and a model train yeah, this is this is definitely a, a club size model train layout and uh, it might even be pretty big by that standard and I'd like to continue continue going on it the stretch going from uh, Humboldt Yard up to Capitol Liquors would really be I think achievable uh, and a good extension but, um, yeah, like I said, kind of pushing the limits of the engine and um, not sure what kind of interest there is from the community in terms of how many people would play it because it's already getting pretty demanding. But thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and learned a little bit about the beer line along the way. And thank you to all of the team members that participated in the creation of this. Uh, it has been thrilling to see it come to life. I'm really proud of the results and to be able to kind of bring this back to life a little bit and to be able to go to these places so to speak you can play this in VR as well too although with how dense this map is uh, VR performance has def definitely suffered uh, when I first started working on this you could play VR pretty easily and it felt great now that we've got a zillion details not so much anymore but uh, thank you for tuning in and watching. Please chime in in the comments if you have any thoughts or comments. And I hope you enjoyed it. Go download the layout if you have Rolling Line. And let me know if you have any questions. And thanks for watching.